time for the first 99 on the account. Okay, fine. I didn't just stand in Winter Todd and Fletch till 99. I don't know how you saw through that. But we are definitely still getting our first 99 today, so let's go. And that is our 400th complete game of Winter Todd. We are going to have a lot of loot by the end of this. To get us all in the mood, I'd love to know what was your first 99 in Old School RuneScape, or if you haven't got it yet, what are you currently working towards as your first 99? Let me know in the comments below. We're on the home stretch now. I want you all to count it down with me. Three. 500 games. Two. One. First 99 on the brand new Iron Man account. Let's go. That is progress at its finest. Given the time of night, it's a bit quiet here at Winter Todd, but let's see if the uh, public chat's feeling friendly. Hey, there we go. That's all we needed. A little bit of acknowledgement to make us feel better about ourselves. <laughs> I am so glad to be done with this place. I am absolutely sick of it. I hate it. Hate it. If you want to celebrate the first 99 on this account, then a like on this video would be amazing. It really helps me out. It's only just the beginning, so if you want to follow along for the rest of the journey, feel free to subscribe as well. Let's keep going. So these are the stats that we ended up with. The uh, bare minimums we were looking for was at least 30 construction so that we could set a house in Relica for future ease of access. Uh, 46 uh, fletching sorry, would, is helpful for if you want to do tick manipulation with teak logs and a knife, but I, I don't think I'll be doing that. But so any fletching levels was just a nice bonus for me. I think I went up to 60 in end because that was one of the last quest requirements. And 59 is useful as well for the myth grapple. And of course, wood cutting, as much as we can get, 60 gets us in the woodcutting guild. And I think 60 as well before we open any crates to get magic logs from the crates. And fire making, obviously, <laughs> 99, because that's what we were going for. Okay, now major spoiler warning, warning, warning. I opened all the crates in a separate video just to save time here because it would have taken a bit of a while. We got <laughs> incredibly lucky. We'll have a look at the loot now in summary, but if you want to actually see the opening live and my reactions and that, then feel free to jump over to the video linked in the card now, or you can go watch it after this. Okay, without further ado, you have been warned. Let's have a look at the loot we got. Bam, look at that. Two dragon axes two terms of fire it's absolutely insane i'll actually show you the collection log so this is what we got from our 603 kills no pet which is a bit unfortunate but i mean you can't really complain with those dragon axes it's, it's absolutely ridiculous in terms of combat achievements if i just quickly go into here um, basically the same as what we were last episode i think i didn't end up we couldn't do mummy because we don't have herb lore. Cozy, we don't have the warm clothes and why Fletcher I was too lazy to, to do it. But yeah, so this is basically the loot we got. Now, because we went all the way to 99, we have plenty of resources to keep going with whatever we want to do in the future. So I'm not going to go too in depth into everything that's here. Um, I might put a list in the description of some of the like minimum goals we would have been going for if we had stopped before 99 fire making that we wanted to hit. Oh, and sorry, that's the cash stack as well before I forget. But I guess just some highlights, like we got a massive amount of magic logs here, 180, that'll be great. We got five magic siege, which is awesome. And I think we got a couple of rain, yeah, we got four rainars in here as well. Um, I think it helped because we actually got three warm gloves very early on. And then if you roll the warm gloves again after that, you can actually get a magic seed. So I think that helped boost our little magic seed haul a bit. And we got, you know, a decent amount of um, starting herbs in that here. So yeah, so that's basically the goods. And we can finally leave this godforsaken place and move on to something else. So we're going to take a break from the massive ceiling grinds and pump out a bit of, I think, questing, you know, a little bit of achievement diaries, just odd jobs here and there. Uh, before we do, I thought I'd throw in this clip. This happened while I was towards the end of my fire making grind and we picked up a random event for the beekeeper, which actually gave us another collection log slot. So that's, I think, our third slot now, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, on with the show. Right, let's get far, far away from Zaya for now. We're going to uh, grab our six onions and two woe leaves that we had picked up from previously. Pop a, pel 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 pop a player owned heliport tab to go to Remington and grab ourselves 10 clay and 4 copper while we're here. Then we're going to swing by Draenor Village, get those dyes I just mentioned. Grab 10 chronicle cards. Then pop into the bank and we're going to grab ourselves a pie dish, bucket, three pots of flour, three red berries and our stew and make our way back over to Port Sarim. So we're gonna whip all that flour and water into pastry dough and try and make our red berry pie. 
Last time I was in Port's Rim, the uh, <laughs> the cooking didn't go so well, so let's see how this one goes. Oh, first try. There you go. Well, that, <laughs> that makes life easy. We don't need all those extra red berries. Anyway, off to Garrett. Uh, we're going to grab ourselves about 16k feathers for some fly fishing in the future. Progress. Knight's Sword at Thurgo. Run up to Betty's shop and buy ourselves a bunch of runes. So what we want is 1,200 mine runes, 2,000 air runes, 1,500 water runes, 500 earth runes, 200 fire runes. We can do all that with the packs. And then we also want 200 body runes and 100 chaos runes and 150 death runes. Probably have to hop around for a little bit of this and use them, buy them manually. If you want to save a little bit of cash on the chaos and death runes. Then we're going to go talk to Veos to get ourselves back to Zaya and complete the client of Karen. If you remember, just before Winter Todd, we had smashed the orb and then went straight to Winter Todd. That's the first quest complete of the episode. And again, like previously, we're going to destroy these lamps and we'll come back and get them when we've unlocked Herbal later on. And then throw the favor certificate onto Piscarelius, which is the general go-to. Now we're going to travel over to Land's End, grab ourselves some starting hunting supplies. If you weren't aware that you can actually get them from these buildings here at Land's End, there's a few supply crates. There's one type in each building, so we want one butterfly net, one to three bird snares, and then five box traps. Just got to empty the inventory out before we continue on. So we just grabbed our strike runes because we're going to have to do a little bit of killing, as well as a spade and hammer because we're going to do some little bit of Hesidious favor pushing the carts and digging up the saltpeter and whatnot. But before we do that, we'll quickly start Queen of Thieves and we're just going to progress it part way through. We don't want to go all the way to the main Karen castle for that large last bit of the quest, just a waste of time for now. So we'll progress it as far as we can and then head down to Hesidius, kill a giant rat to get the rat bone for the bone collecting quest and its meat as well for Druidic Ritual. Talk to the estate agent so that we can move our house here in the future. Buy four compost packs from Varna. And now we need to go dig up a total of 300 saltpeter. So we already had 180 in the bank here from Winter Todd. So we just got to dig up the other 120. And then we will be able to proceed without his city as favor. Mm. Ah, I'm an idiot. I was too busy watching Gilanor Games finale and I went around the north side, which was silly because there's so many monsters in that temple. Speaking of Gilanor Games, that's got to be some of the best content on RuneScape on YouTube at the moment. I just, <laughs> what a ripper of a show. Out of curiosity, let me know what was your favorite part if you did watch it and you haven't watched it, definitely go check out Soup RS on YouTube. It's a wonderful, wonderful series. Some of the best content out there. Anyway, back to business. So we're going to dig up the rest of the saltpeter that we need. Now push some plows. These things take ages. We only need 5%, but it takes an absolute eternity. Longest 10 minutes of my life, but there we go. Now we can head back to the bank and mix up all our saltpeter and compost. Quick and easy, that's our 300 sulfurous fertilizer, let's go hand it in. We also got a nice little 7 farming levels off all of that too. And 35% Hosidious favor, just like that, so that's another little milestone checked off. We can stop there because doing the Depths of Despair quest will give us another certificate for 10% more favor, which will then get us to 45% to do the mess hall favor method or cooking training as well. Time for another brief skill and intermission, we're just going to steal some fruit from these stalls. You can run back and forth like I'm doing here to speed it up a bit. Most of the time you'll end up having to stand still anyway because we're an early Iron Man with no stamina potions. You can eat the papaya fruits that have a bit more run energy, but apart from that, you can't do much. We also want to save up every single strange fruit because like I said, we don't have any stamina. That's our, sort of our future run restoration for the time being. And we also want to save all the Golova Nova fruits because they can be turned into botanical pies, which give plus four herbal, which is obviously an incredibly useful thing for an Iron Man. We'll hang on to a couple of Jango berries as well for future quests such as Watchtower or Fairy Tale Part 1. So I am curious, when I do these episodes where we're doing a bit of power questing and multitasking, do you like to see every single step how I've kind of shown it? I think it's useful because it's a bit of, acts as a bit of a guide to anyone else that wants to follow along or just see what the early game is like. And there's so many small little activities happening, but I guess for some it might drag on. Let me know. I'm curious what you think. I personally just think it's a lot more helpful and useful to see rather than I, I show up after half an hour of gathering items and you have no idea where it all came from in the bank and then I'm just progressing quests with items that you never saw me get. <laughs> it kind of defeats the whole purpose of building an Iron Man from scratch and documenting my whole journey if I'm cutting that stuff out. But I try to keep it as brief and sharp as possible. On that note, I'm really happy with how things are going so far, especially since I'm not a full-time creator or anything so I have a, you know, a real life to tend to. We've already smashed out a 99, that took a lot of time this week and we've made a lot of progress with mul multiple quests and little achievement diary tasks. So while I knock out this thieving grind, you can catch up with the progress so far with the video on screen. Or if you're already up to date, drop a sub and be ready to follow along with the next episode when it comes out. Have a good one guys. See ya.